Hey guys, and welcome back to Twitchy Plays Kerbal Space Program, my career mode playthrough, Twitch Tech Industries. And those of you that were with us last time will remember, well, will mainly remember my exploding space station, but there were other things we did last, last episode. One of them was starting to make work on our SSTO, the sort of the plane hybrid rocket type vessel. The problem with that is that we were so far behind in our science and technology that we don't have things like the pre-coolers and the hypersonic engines and stuff like that. So we're stuck with just those bog standard uh, jet engines and they are rubbish. You are never, ever, ever going to make an SSTO with that. Maybe some sort of jet assisted takeoff, but not an SSTO. So with all that in mind, I took two contracts to go to the moon and do a whole load of temperature scans and then we built this thing here. Now it's a little bit weird and I'm not going to like spoil what's underneath that fairing until we get out towards the moon, but suffice to say this is the first use of my um, nuclear power engines and I think that's going a pretty good use for it. Like we're, we're taking such a small package, we've got such an overly efficient engine, the, the fuel use is ridiculous and as you can tell by my trajectory there I need a ridiculous fuel use because for some reason I made a straight shot burn to the moon, poured far too much delta V into it so we've got like we've got an overshot with our velocity far too much then we're gonna have to use all the fuel in this thing just to try and slow us down and even then that's not gonna to be quite enough. This was a much longer burn than I was anticipating even though we did like make a straight burn to the moon as I said we didn't put ourselves in orbit around Kerbin and because of that we ended up going a little bit overly high if you will like behind the moon if, if, if that's the way of wording it. I never quite know which way my directions are when we're talking about orbits because things that, that you think are intuitive like if you go a bit high it's, it's not actually going high is it it's going a little bit backwards and that the weird things like that but anyway we broke our fairings and here we go this is the bug it is my tiny little moon probe i wish i'd put wheels on it at this point actually thinking about it because the, there were a few few times when wheels would be more useful but all we really have here are a bunch of engines uh, sorry a bunch of fuel tanks with a couple of the tiny ant grade engines um they were stuck on the end but then i used the widgets to turn them downwards move them to the underside so we could use them almost as radial engines because you know as with everything i don't have the science and technology to have properly radial mounted engines ah and then on the ends we stuck the probe core, things like the uh, Kerbal Engineer panel, that, that's always useful. Uh, and now what we're trying to do is fly our way around and get a nice circular orbit so that we can start messing around with the orbit and make sure that our flight path, path sorry, goes over the top of all these different scientific nodal points here to hit. Now, the efficient way of doing this would be having my apoapsis up really high my periapsis at the exact height that i need to do the science at and then we like make the periapsis meet up with all the different science points as as time goes on but as always the big word there was time and i am an impatient chap very very impatient so what i decided to do was actually have quite a tight orbit that gives us two opportunities but on well it gives us infinite opportunities to pass over actually because you've got the low point and the high point both being very close to the point where you need to be to take the science so that that should be all good right so with our orbit settled into the first thing i've noticed that all my scientific targets are on the dark side of the planet and that's that's going to be a little bit awkward for such a tiny vessel and and for making videos more than anything so what we're going to do is we're going to come over to moon base uh, alpha i think this is moon base alpha and we're going to watch kerbin spin away as the galaxy spins in the other direction and we wait for the sun to set here because this is on the other side of the planet from all the science nodes so that then when we're here the, the sun is starting to rise i, I could have waited a little bit longer i could have waited a little bit longer but here we go the bug is flying over the top of moon base alpha now it's beautiful to just like see the two interact or at least just just to watch them pass over it's great uh and now begins the non-trivial task of trying to make sure that all my orbits line up with all the scientific targets that i have out there i say this is non-trivial because mainly it's a choice between do i go up or do i go down and which one is then going to set me up best for the next target? And and that 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 was the bit that really got me. And I still don't think I did it as efficiently as I could because Kerbal. And then once I have actually decided on which target to go for, I then have to make sure that my uh, apoapsis or periapsis is going to put me in the right spot at the right time, particularly. For the height, the elevation, the altitude above the surface of the moon. Because obviously all these temperature scans, they, they have a very narrow band, like compared to the infinite voids of space. 
trying to get within, I don't know, say 500 kilometers, uh, sorry, five kilometers, not 500 kilometers, five kilometers was actually quite difficult. Uh, I ended up with all sorts of horrible messes like this one. You can see that I am having to almost set myself up to crash and then save myself at the last moment just so that we could make sure we were skimming under. Thankfully, after this one, I was down low enough at a nice round orbit that we didn't actually need to do any sort of such extreme measures again. But this first one in particular really terrified me. Just trying to get down low enough and then have a circular orbit afterwards. Terrifying. After getting used to the name Terry, we flew our way into the first scientific zone. We took the data and proof of concept complete. We actually managed to take some science. Woo! Okay, so now it's about trying to figure out where to go next. And this really was difficult. I could see that I wanted to get down there. But at the same time, I could also see that maybe at some point I wanted my orbit to lie um, around that zone. Uh, and I was coming in at a sort of a sideways angle. I wanted to be sort of almost 90 degrees opposed to what my, my orbit was at that point in time. Woo, that was a long sentence to get to that explanation there, but, you know, there we go, that's what we're dealt with. We're also dealing with these orbits in the way they are, but at this point I'm starting to get a little bit worried with how much delta V I've got left, because obviously each orbital manoeuvre gives me a delta V readout on uh, the little line there on the right of my nav ball, and I'd like to know what percentage of my total fuel each one is doing, but so, so I can figure out whether I'm going to have enough fuel left or not to make, like, a deorbiting burn and land. So I read it on the vessel readout window from Kerbal Engineer and then for some reason immediately closed that window and decided I didn't need it. Uh, next we're going to try and go for a slightly lower down orbit. I'm not sure why I chose this one. I, I did this a couple of days ago now and I can't remember my exact reasoning for this one. But I'm sure I had a reason so we're going to go with it now. Uh, and burning away, I found it, especially at this point in on the night side, a lot better just to use my nav ball, fly by the instruments. Uh, I could have waited a bit more time to try and make sure that I was back into the sunlight and that would have been great for, for video reasons but you definitely get the idea of what's going on here by watching those blue lines go around or at least I did anyway that was the decision I came to there and I'm worried here that I have not gone down low enough. Uh, this was a perennial problem with going around here. Obviously, I only had two points on my orbit to like nail what altitude I was at, the, the Apple apps and the, the Perry apps. And I didn't know whether the, a, a midpoint in between would go down low enough to pass me through the scientific uh, target zone. But after a little bit of juggling, making sure that I could got, got my Perry apps and Apple apps in the right sort of places, and with the smallest of manoeuvrable burns into a, a radial position, we made sure that we were down low enough to get into the right spot and even be up high enough to be in the right spot. Every now and then the camera would switch round in its di uh, direction here, telling me that ooh, something really needs to be dealt with. And I finally decided at this point that maybe this is the time to set up a polar burn rather than this equatorial one that I seem to be in. Mainly because that will give me the opportunity to hit more targets quicker. And once again, my impatience very much came to the fore here. Even though it was going to cost me an ungodly amount of Delta V, it was definitely something that I thought was worth the time. One of my big issues here was definitely making sure that I had enough power throughout all this. Because I only put enough uh, solar panels on the top half of this vessel for some reason. Uh, I don't know, I put legs on it so I assumed it was going to be on the floor. And therefore I designed it to only have an up direction. Crazy. Silly idea, we'll learn better next time. One of the big problems that I had over and over again with this polar orbit was the fact that the planet spun underneath me. Now this should be something that I should take, take into account, but unfortunately I'm not too good at judging that. I've not spent enough time in the orbit around the moon to know it, how fast it, it travels underneath me. I know it does travel and I did try to overshoot to make up for that, but you know, it's hard to, to account. We just saw Collins Craft go flying past there. That was left there from something like the third episode of this series. Uh, it's been stranded there for such a long time. I don't actually know if we're ever going to be able to get round to either salvaging it or bringing it back. I am thinking that with this exploded space station that we've got, maybe at some point it's time to bring in some sort of like um, anti-Kesler crew. Like, just a, a group of three three Kerbinauts. Oh, I hate that word. The three three Kerb, Kerbals that can go around in their own little ship that can get refueled all the time, that will just uh, deorbit anything that just happens to be stuck in space. Like Collins Craft, maybe bring it back to... Um to curb in or uh, deorbit all the all the exploded bits of the space station things like that just go and rescue like obviously with the um 
with the rescue contracts, that's left a whole load of command capsules and stuff in orbit. That if we just got out there and slapped a couple of uh, a couple of parachutes and maybe a rocket or at least deorbited with the vessel we're in, we could get some free money there. Free money. So I was ranting over the top of it, but we missed me collecting a science bit there and also missing one of the science targets because I thought I was too far away and I was starting to set myself up for the next one. And unfortunately, I went into it and before I could get back and hit the temperature thing, I left the zone, which was all a bit weird. But, you know, that that's what we're doing, right? And right now we are exactly on the other side of the planet, or at least we were, and I pulled down my periapsis to just make sure that I was going to hit the right, right bit here. And as we're coming down close, we realised, ah... This time I did actually miss it, so we're going to have to wait for a whole nother orbit. My, the, the impatience gland in my head is throbbing at this point. Like, boom, 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 boom. Come on, it's just a whole orbit this low down. We can't time warp that fast. Though, time warping at these speeds down here does look quite impressive, I've got to say. Uh, I, I love just kind of skimming over the surface of the moon being like, yeah in orbit uh obviously like with a lot of the bodies that i go to are having atmosphere it's not the type of thing you can do all the time uh, and it never quite feels as um as dangerous at minmus as it does on the moon like Min minmus feels like it's just a, a bit of a jaunt around an, a an asteroid but around the moon you can really feel like you're spinning around a planetoid amazing so we only really have one more target to hit that we can do when we're in orbit. So we're going to set ourselves up here. I finally managed to click at this point in the mission that if we do all our inclination changes at the poles, we're not putting ourselves into a more and more equatorially aligned orbit. So I'm going to try and make sure that I do all my, my maneuvers up the top here, or at least up the top or down at the bottom now. Uh, one of the things that was that did happen when I was first put into a polar orbit was I kept on trying to make my changes just 90 degrees round from where I wanted them to happen, which ended up putting me more and more just ever so slightly inclined orbit or uh, equatorial wise. Uh, that just got, kept on getting stronger and stronger. Thankfully, we managed to hit the scientific target at quite a distance away. Uh, I, I was quite impressed with how far away we were. I, I was pretty sure we were a good like two, three kilometers away. And finally, we are spinning, up, spinning around as fast as we can to make this last manoeuvre burn. Now, I am starting to panic a little bit here because next time we come to our staging view, you will see that I am running out of fuel. I'm down to about ooh, a fifth of the tank, a sixth of the tank. Uh, I'm really worried that we're not going to have enough to slow down because whilst it doesn't take much fuel to uh, tweak our orbit somewhat, trying to completely nullify our orbital velocity... Yeah, that, that takes a bit more doing, a bit more grunt and a bit more a bit more fuel. But we had a word with the AI that was in control of this, and because we didn't program any sort of self-preservation instinct into it, it was fully happy to go ahead and try and make this landing anyway. I'm not sure if that counts as an abuse of a dependence intelligence or something, uh, I'm not sure, but you know, it's letting us get away with it, and no one is coming along to try and stand up for its rights, so we're just going to deal with it here. So we're coming down pretty hard, well, we're coming down pretty hard, but we're not coming down hard enough. In fact, we fly over two of the, two of the landing sites, and we are still flying ever ever further there is one still ahead of us but i'm just about nearly out of fuel but we've managed to put that put down which is amazing but we are so out of fuel now for something that's becoming quite a regular fixture on almost all my missions how do we go and hit the final bit of our contracts when we only have well no fuel left at all Obviously, with us just mainly being a cylinder, we're going to go with the rolling option. We have to go sideways, obviously, because, you know, we face forwards and backwards, so we have to kind of go sideways. And I'm not sure if I'm going in the right direction. It's, ve it's very hard to, to tell, really. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that this is right, and I'm trying to nail my technique for spinning here, because if I just spin round and round really quickly, I end up um, catching the front of my legs into the ground at kind of the wrong point and I end up pushing myself up rather than pushing myself forward which is definitely my, my point here. I didn't have to go doing this mission the way I've done it here. I did manage to put a Clampatron Jr. on the top of this so I could have launched a refueling mission given it a little robotic arm and kind of reached out and grabbed it and like given it a, a whole load of fuel but given the tiny tiny fraction of the surface of the of the planet or the moon sorry that we had to cover i thought it was much better just to like do a little roll like this now i say a little roll like this we are currently at something like 500 percent speed and we're barely even oh, a quarter of the way through the roll here so i think what we're going to do is actually jump forwards a little bit because nothing else really all that interesting happened here i managed to not completely blow it up too many times the times that I did, I'd quick save relatively early beforehand. So, yeah, I'm going to jump forwards 
to the first science point, or at least the first landed science point. Which, just for your reference, is 45 minutes of mission time later. I had been rolling for an incredibly long time. Uh, I had to do a couple of bits, literally a couple of bits again, because I managed to get my uh, landing gear stuck in the floor and stuff like that. But most of this was done at real time because you couldn't time accelerate this. Could you imagine doing this at multiple speeds? Everything would fly off and break off and, and get all sorts of weird and nasty things happening and, and bugs. Bugs. As I'm just making my way to the final uh, landed zones here, I think we'll ride on board with us all this way, mainly to watch that happen. That, unfortunately, was my Clampatron Jr. on top breaking, which means that if we want to refuel this thing, we're going to have to come back with a whole load of the Kerbal Attachment parts and all the horrors that I've been having with that sort of system in this particular version of the game here. I've been having some real troubles with that. Okay, so we are just rolling around. I think I made a quick save just to, to make sure we didn't lose anything else, but I thought... As it was just one part that we lost, it would be more than more than okay for us to carry on rolling down. Just trying to make this last last science bit here. Down the side of um, craters is amazing just to set this guy rolling. You just kind of fling him down and let him do his thing. And he, he just rolls his way down to the bottom of the crater. And then you just kind of reorientate yourself and start spinning again. The whole idea I had with this was trying to keep myself relatively fast, but also trying to bounce as much as I can because the, the contact with the ground was my only source of friction and like slowing myself down was not the way I was going here, especially as we could only really get a maximum speed of something like 12 meters per second, something like that, which is fast, it, uh, relatively fast, but it's not really fast enough for traveling over the surface of the moon. But here we go, last scientific data point, boom, all the contracts complete, and wow, that, that was a mission. The entire mission time was three days and three hours, something like that. It was long. Okay, so coming back to the R&D building, and we're going to buy everything we can on the supersonic flight path, because that is what this has all been about, is trying to make an SSTO. We're going to have a look at what science is also available to us, and I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. I will see you next time, where we're going to try and get more science, because we still haven't got hypersonic engines. Bye!